Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I got one of uh, Bayonne Exterminating's vans down here today. Multiple complaints on electrical stuff, and one of them happens to be the uh, the blower motor only works on high speed. Now I know some of you guys are like, oh, big deal, it's easy fix, this and that. Well, some guys don't know how to check them, and I wanted to take you through how to diagnose it if you don't know, and um, we'll go from there. And don't you can't ever, even if you do know what it is or you have it on the top of your head what it's going to be, don't ever take for granted that's the problem because that's how you're going to get burned. Always diagnose it, even if you're 99.9% .9 sure, that 0.1% will get you. So uh, I didn't check it yet. All I did, which I'll show you, is all I did so far is pull down the cover under here and I removed the blower resistor because that's where I want to make my checks, all right? So I'm going to set you guys up, up here. I'm going to turn the... I'm going to turn the key on. Actually, I'm going to just going to start this thing, actually. It runs. Blower's off right now. All right, blower is off. I'm gonna turn it to speed one, two, three. And uh, high. Okay, so high speed works. The rest of the speeds do not work. All right, before we go any further, let me refer you guys to the wiring diagram set you up <clears throat> and we're just gonna go through this uh, what I did here is I marked everything out so that you guys I did this for your purpose not mine uh, in different colors okay just to try to break the circuit down even a little bit further to help you out and to understand how it works you have your blower motor relay here here you have your switch here you have your blower resistor, which is the part that we have out that we're going to check uh, at that source there. And here is your blower motor. Well, <clears throat> we know the blower motor does work. All right. We know that uh, the blower motor itself at least is functional. All right. This is the part that's in question is the resistor. Now, if you look here, we have a fuse. It's hot at all times. It's going to go into the feed side of the relay when that blower relay is switched when the when the when the blower switch is switched on okay you're going to send ground through the resistor and up to the blower motor now this is going to have ground uh, all the time at the at the blower relay so when you turn the ignition key on, that's telling you when you have this ignition key hot, uh, on, it's hotter than run or start, that relay is going to always be energized, all right, with the key on. So this is going to be closed, all right? If this did not work, you would not have a blower working on any speed. So right off the top of our head, we know that the blower works on high. We know that the blower motor is functional. We did not do an amperage draw test on it yet. We do know it's functional though, and we do know that the blower relay is working properly, all right? So where are we going? We're going to the switch and to the, and we're, we're gonna, what do we have to test? We have to test the switch and we have to test the resistor. Now, most of the time, your resistor here is going to be the problem. Have I had faulty switches? Of course. I mean, anything's possible, a broken wire, anything's possible. The fact that it doesn't work on three lower speeds is telling me that I have a problem at the resistor. Why is that? I'm going to show you. When you refer back to the switch, this is ground, constant ground, into the switch, which means the switch is going to control the, res the, the blower motor through ground, not through power, all right? Power is handled already through the, re through the relay. 
So when you turn it on to speed one, low speed, the green is your ground going into your resistor. It's going to go through the three resistors, through this fuse or this fusible um, link in here. And it's gonna come out and up. Where this orange meets, it's gonna come up to the blower motor, all right? That's low speed. The second speed works the same way, except it goes through only two resistors and so on. The third speed only goes through the one resistor. So if I check at the resistor, that's where I'm going to find the source of my issues, okay? Um, if you go to high speed, if you, don't, if you don't have high working, when you go to number five here, uh, the highest speed, because actually it's one is off, two is low, and so on, five would be high. If you notice, it completely bypasses the resistor. It does not go through here. It goes direct. It's 100% ground. There's no resistor in there. All right? And that's the only one that works when you're taking this out of the loop. So the only thing we have to verify is that this works. So we're going to do that now, and I'll show you how I like to do this. All right, so if you look right down here, I have my jumper installed for power and ground. And it's just a really long, <clears throat> it's just a really long lead that plugs into the cigarette lighter. <clears throat> right here, or power outlet, whatever you want to call it. And I can take my test light and I can plug it in. This would be the ground. And I can verify that's working. Okay. And if I want to, if I want to check ground, I could just switch this around here to power and then I can start checking for ground, okay? So ground, all right, you got it? Makes sense, let's go, let's move on. Let's grab our diagram. Set up my light here so you guys can see what I'm doing. I think you can see. And here's my resistor. So I'm hooked up with my test light to power. Let's go to second speed. We'll go to black and yellow. I'm gonna put my test light in on the black and yellow. All right. And I'm sure you guys, if the camera's picking it up, can already see the problem. And there is my output. All right. So that's from the switch. That's proving that my switch does work. Now I'm going to go to the black and blue. I'm going to shut the blower off. I'm going to go to my black and blue wire. I'm going to show you guys up close in a minute here what's going on with this thing. It's pretty cool. Um, into my black and blue wire, and I have no output. All right, I have nothing. The blower's on. Uh, this one was quite easy. Uh, quite easy to see what was wrong as soon as I actually looked at the plug. But I'm going to unplug this if I can, which I doubt. I do not think this is going to come apart. I think it's crispy critters. Oh, I spoke too soon. Oh, God. All right. Crispy critters. This is one melted lower resistor. And if you look at the if you look at my um, my wiring here, we'll bring you in for a better shot. You can see that's in no better shape. So we need a pigtail, and we need a uh, we need a new blower resistor. All right, so that's it. What we're going to do is we're going to order a uh, blower resistor and a pigtail for this thing and we will 
check the amperage draw on the motor, verify that it is good. If it is, she'll be sent. If not, we'll be putting a blower motor as well and keep this from happening again. But this thing definitely got corroded up pretty bad and beat up pretty bad. So you can see the crap falling out of it. So that's that. All right, guys. So after we, after we replaced the resistor and the pigtail, uh, we, we, we put a uh, scope uh, current ramp on the, um, on the blower motor. Checking that pattern, you can see it here. Uh, it doesn't look so pretty, okay? This is all repeatable, and uh, it is proving that the blower motor is failing. So at that point, we're going to, we do replace the blower motor, all right? We're not going to have this come back in a couple of months for another failure due to a blower motor being uh, on the way out. Uh, so this blower motor now, after we, after we replaced it, you can see the pattern here in this still shot from the Pico and you can see the repetition there and how clear, how clean it is. Um, that is on high speed on both patterns, by the way, on both waveforms. And you can see how much cleaner that signal now is. Okay. So that's proving that everything internally is, is good in that motor. Um, if for any of you guys that are interested in, you know, testing with scopes and you don't do it and you're intimidated by it, uh, this is the time to get into it because now is, the, uh, t is like never before. You don't have to call a guy to come into your shop to teach you how to use a scope. Um, you know, there, you, have, you have the internet. You have the ability to take uh, online uh, seminars. You can watch YouTube videos. You can do so many things today to learn how to use a scope. And if you do and become proficient at it, you'll be surprised at how you'll cut your time uh, down on diagnostics. We've been using them in our shop for a long time, as you guys know. We're still learning new techniques, new abilities with the scope. Um, you know, there's, there's a million things you can do, but you have to start somewhere. My honest recommendation, uh, because guys do ask me this too, where to, you know, what should I buy for a scope and this and that, it depends on what you're doing. You have everything from a single channel to, I think, uh, up to eight channel on the, you know, on the scopes that are, uh, that are out there. Uh, the U-scope, if you're just getting into scopes, it's a single channel. And you're not going to be able to do cam crank, obviously, with it or anything like that. But for doing single channel stuff, that scope is amazing. It can be used as a meter scope. Um, I think that thing is fantastic. AES Wave sells it. Obviously, it's, uh, you know, those guys, I'm a, I'm a very loyal customer to them. Uh, I've been buying stuff for a long time. And highly suggest uh, checking them out if you haven't because they're the best in the business. Um, uh, the U-Scope, I think, Master Kit somewhere in the $400 range, if I remember right. I bought mine quite a while back, uh, and I find myself using that thing a lot. So it's, it's a really, really nice little tool. Um, for other stuff, obviously, the Pico is, uh, is my go-to because it's a four-channel, because it's obviously on a bigger screen. You know, um, you know there's, there's pros and cons to everything. But uh, if you don't want to spend the money on a Pico because you're just learning this stuff... The, the, other, the other option is to use scope to get into it and learn. And, and it's, a, it's a tool you'll, you'll be able to utilize regardless. So once you get comfortable and you say, yeah, this stuff is great, now I, you know, I really want to move on to another scope, then I would suggest calling AES back and buying a uh, Pico. But, uh, you know, that's just me. I mean, some guys prefer the, the uh, snap-on stuff. I, I have a Vantage Pro. I don't particularly like it. Um, I think that, uh, in all honesty, it's ass backwards for the zoom. I don't like that. Some guys are fine with it. They're used to it. I could just never wrap my head around it. It drives me nuts. So I, I don't really use it much. Um, the Pico, uh, there's other options out there that are cheaper, I guess, like, uh, hand tech and, uh, Autel, but I have no personal experience to speak on with those. So I won't, uh, you could check out some of the other YouTube channels that uh, they do utilize those scopes and they may be able to give you some insight into what, the, you know, if they're worth it or not. Um, you know, I don't, I don't just buy stuff just, you know, usually you don't just buy stuff just to try it out. Um, and I wouldn't, you know, I'm not going to go spend money on a hand tech or something or, or the Autel when I have a Pico. So it's just, you know, just what it is. But uh, you guys uh, that are not using scopes because you're intimidated, like I said, go out and, you know, check it out, buy one and try it and uh, start learning. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's an amazing tool. You'll be able to see problems that you didn't realize were there, uh, you know, even with fuel pumps and such. I mean, 
you know, it's it's a it's an amazing tool to have. So it's got more more uh, purposes and things that you can do with it than I can ever sit here and list for you. So you know, check out channels and check out videos with uh, with scope techniques and uh, things that the guys are doing because they've been around for a long, long time. But it's uh, it's almost like in the last ten years they've suddenly erupted again and everybody seems to be using them. So it seemed like a long time nobody used them. Check it out, all right? Uh, it's, it's well worth the investment. Uh, in any case, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, the support. Uh, like, subscribe, ring the bell, and uh, we'll see you on the next, on the next uh, broken vehicle. Thanks for watching.